Hello friends. Welcome to yet another session on international finance. In this video, we are going to examine the concept of balance of payment. We will examine the nature of balance of payment, the accounting principles associated with it, as well as implications of disequilibrium in international section. Now let us examine these concepts in detail. So these are our topics, the meaning of balance of payment, the accounting framework of balance of payment and disequilibrium in international transaction. We'll start from the meaning of balance of payment. It is a statistical record of all international economic transactions of residents of one country with the residents of rest of the countries or rest of the world during an accounting period, usually one year. Some points may be noted in those definitions. One, it refers to the economic transaction, that is, the exchange of good, service or asset in which a payment of money is involved. At the same time, it may also be noted that unilateral transfers for which no payment is made is also included in the balance of payment. Thus, balance of payment is a flow of goods, services, unilateral transfers, assets between residents of one country with the rest of the world. Moving to the importance of balance of payment. Balance of payment is considered as one of the most important statistical record of a country. Why? First of all, it reveals the export and import of goods and services. It reveals how much goods and services the country is exporting as well as importing during any year. It also provides us a knowledge about the borrowing and lending activity of the country and also it reveals the foreign exchange position of the country. As we all know, the central bank of the country keep a portion of its reserve as international reserve or foreign exchange reserve to meet international payments. So what happens to the foreign exchange reserves will be revealed by the balance of payment. Thus, the knowledge of balance of payment will inform the government about the international position of a country and will help in its formulation of monetary, fiscal and trade policies. Moving to the accounting framework of balance of payment. Balance of payments are always in balance because the methodology followed is double entry bookkeeping system. That means that each international transaction is recorded twice, once as a credit item and also as a debit item of equal amount. Every transaction thus got two sides. The credit involves a receipt of payment from the foreigners. The debit involves a payment to the foreigners. Traditionally, balance of payment is divided into two accounts and there is other remaining items that will not correctly fit into the current and capital account. Broadly speaking, current account comprises of income flows while capital account deals with the changes in asset and liabilities. We will move towards the other remaining item a little bit later. Now, first of all, focusing on the current account. Current account is a trade account. It involves export and import of commodities as well as services and unilateral transfers. That's why Sometimes current account is also called as the sum of visible as well as invisible balance. Let us elaborate these two terms a bit detail. Visible trade balance means those of export and import of commodities or what we call the merchandise. They are known as visible items because we can visibly see commodities crossing national boundaries. So, 
receipt of export and expenditure on import on goods which can be visibly seen as crossing national boundaries is termed as the visible balance on the other hand the receipt and payments related to the service trade like tourism banking shipping transportation health insurance are also all called as invisible items it may also be noted that the receipt and payment with respect to interest dividend and profit is also termed as invisible balance in balance of payment accounts and also it include the unilateral transfers unilateral transfers are those transfers in which there is no quid pro quo examples are gift from abroad foreign aid from abroad remittances from abroad all are treated as the invisible balance your unilateral transfers which is a part of invisible balance of the current account now moving towards the capital account it concerns with the movement of financial capital in and out of the country that is it involves the capital inflows and capital outflows capital inflows means capital is coming into the country capital outflows means capital is going out of the country how capital can come into the country one through borrowing the sales of overseas asset and investment by the foreigners now let us focus those investment by the foreigners how investment can take place there are basically three ways one through a foreign direct investment we call it as fdi can be through fpi foreign portfolio investment or it can be through foreign institutional investment foreign direct investment is an investment in which the owner of the capital do have a control over the investment it's a real investment it's a business investment even though the control need not be 100% that is an investment in the foreign country in which the owner of the capital do have a control over it that is ownership control and management go together in the case of foreign direct investment purchase of a company abroad starting a subsidiary taking over a company merger acquisition all are part of foreign direct investment even though as we said control need not be 100% on the other hand portfolio investment is an investment in the foreign country in which the owner of the capital do not have a control over the investment it's an indirect investment it's a rendier investment basically portfolio investment is a lending of capital to get return but there is no control over the use of the capital as far as the owner is concerned so in the portfolio investment even though ownership is there there is no control over it it's an indirect investment investment in minority securities deposits in foreign commercial banks purchase of equities bond debentures securities all are example of portfolio investment foreign institutional investment is an investment by an investor of an investable fund registered in the country outside in which it is invested that is foreign companies are investing companies may include insurance companies pension fund mutual funds hedge funds and companies only need to get registered in the stock exchange to make an investment in india foreign institutional investment refers to outside companies investing in the financial market of our country so these are the three forms of investment or for investment which which is a part of our capital inflow so capital inflow took place as a result of as we said as a result of borrowing sales of overseas asset as well as investment by the foreigners now capital outflows means it's a debit item capital is leaving our country how capital can leave our country through lending buying of overseas asset that means our citizens are investing in the foreign country they are making either direct portfolio or institutional investment purchase of domestic asset owned by foreigners also means there is a capital outflow so these are the items in the capital account now 
the other remaining items that means these are items that does not clearly fit into the current or capital account it include two things one errors and omissions errors and omission arises because of difficulties of getting accurate information basically we follow a sampling method and 100% accuracy cannot be expected there may be under reporting of data or maybe over reporting sometimes so we will incorporate an errors and omissions to reflect the difficulties to get accurate as a basically as a statistical discrepancy there is also official reserves and liabilities earlier we said that by looking at balance of payment we can get information about the foreign exchange position of the country how it is through the other remaining items of the balance of payment the official reserves or foreign exchange reserves are kept as a form of gold sdr special drawing right of imf as well as foreign currencies so these three are the accounts of balance of payment the current account the capital account as well as balance or other remaining items as we said balance of payment are always in balance but that does not mean that all the accounts in the balance of payment is in equilibrium that can be deficit or surplus in some of the sub accounts of the balance of payment so we will have three different kinds of what we call disequilibrium in international transaction before that the all items in the balance of payment are usually classified as autonomous items as well as accommodating items all transaction in the current and capital account are called autonomous items because they are purely done for the profit or business motive without any consideration to the balance of payment position of the country when accommodating items are the activity by the monetary authority to finance any deficit or surplus in the autonomous receipt and payment obviously it is determined by the net consequences of autonomous receipt and payment used as a balancing item sometimes also called items below the line while autonomous items are called items above the line but there are difficulties of classifying classifying items as autonomous as well as accommodating thus we will have three different kinds of disequilibrium in international transaction one there can be deficit or surplus in the current account there is something called basic balance and finally we have what is known as the official settlement balance earlier we saw that current account is a trade account it includes the visible balance the invisible balance as well as unilateral transfers current account provides the information about the changes on the economy because the visible and invisible trade very quickly reacts to changes in other economic variables of the country has an effect on the confidence of the foreign exchange market and has a knock on effect on the economy so if you are having a surplus in the current account it shows a better strength or a stronger economy that means your export earnings are much greater than your import obligation basic balance is a sum of current account balance as well as balance on long term capital flows considered as a best indicator during the period of 1950s or 60s or what is popularly known as the bretton woods period when the world is following a fixed exchange rate system but the problem with the basic balance is that an overall positive basic balance may not be good thing or an overall basic balance deficit not necessarily be a bad thing because if you are borrowing a lot you might be having a positive basic balance that does not reflects that the economy is stronger so careful or careful you must be taken when we argue for the basic balance so it may not always reflect the strength of the economy the third one is the official settlement balance it focuses on the operations that the monetary authority have to undertake to finance any imbalance in the current and capital account here also we saw that this is a settlement concept now how a deficit can be financed it can be financed by drawing its foreign exchange reserves that's why we keep a portion of our asset as forex reserves it can borrow from monetary authorities like imf because one of the objective or prime objective of imf is to help those countries who are facing balance of payment difficulties 
So these three are the disequilibrium concept with related to international transaction. There can be deficit or surplus in the current account. There can be what is known as basic balance and finally the official settlement balance. So in this video, we have examined the meaning of balance of payment. We saw that it is the statistical record of all international economic transaction of residents of one country with the residents of rest of the world during an accounting period, usually one year. It's one of the most important statistical record as well. As far as balance of payment accounts are concerned, we saw that it can be classified as current account, capital account and other remaining item. Or there can be disequilibriums in balance of payment like deficit or surplus in the current account, the basic balance and official settlement balance. You can always visit our blog skpeco.blogspot.in for more information and details. Until next time, stay safe, happy learning, thank you.